Hi there, I'm Ms. Schaefer, and I'm here to show you about our new FRQs in AP Psychology. Now this is new for the 2024-2025 school year, so keep in mind looking at FRQ information from past years if you Google anything. So, for the AP Psychology exam, the new update, we have two sections, very similar to what we had in the past. The first section is multiple choice with 75 questions, 90 minutes, and it's worth a majority of the exam score. You'll have some questions about research and content application from the variety of units throughout the course. For section two, we'll have the free response, and here we're going to have two questions over 70 minutes, and it's worth about a third of the exam score. There's two different types of FRQs. One is the article analysis question, or the AAQ, and the second is the evidence-based question, or the EBQ. Today we'll really be focusing on the AAQ, but here's just sort of a snapshot of the differences between the two. The AAQ is really a research study analysis, getting to dig deep into some of the variables and data of a specific research study, while the evidence-based question is going to provide three articles, and you'll have to try to synthesize and come up with a claim based on the information contained within them. Both of these are weighted the same, uh, so they'll both be seven points each, and they will not take quite the same amount of time when we talk about budgeting. So our recommended pacing for the FRQs is going to be about 25 minutes on the AAQ and 45 minutes on the EBQ. This difference really breaks down into how long you're going to spend reading. The AAQ only has one research article for you to look at, so about a five minute reading time would be suggested while the EBQ will have three articles, so estimating about a 15 minute reading time. So this helps explain how you can break down that 70 minute FRQ section. You can flex the time however you need it on the actual test, but we'll try practicing this pacing in class. So focusing in on the AAQ, you're gonna be provided with one summarized peer review source with a few different components to it. You are going to be able to earn up to seven points across six different question parts, with the final question part being worth two points. Our suggested time again is going to be 25 minutes total with a five minute planning and 20 minute writing period. The AAQ prompt is always going to have fairly consistent language. It's going to depend a little bit on the research study at hand, but it is going to be asking using this common language. So first part is identifying a research method used in the study. B is always going to ask about finding the operational definition of a variable specific to the research study in question. C is going to ask you about some sort of statistical value in the question, whether it be a correlational value using mean, median, mode, um, a variety of different things. And then we have D is always going to ask you to identify an ethical guideline applied by the researchers from the study. E is always going to ask you about the generalizability of the evidence in the study, and F is going to always ask you about whether or not the findings support or refute the researcher's hypothesis, which may be stated in the question. So, a very simplified annotated version. A is all about research methods, B is all about operational definitions, C is all about the statistical data, E is about ethics, or D is about <laughs> ethics, E is about generalizability, and F is about drawing conclusions on whether or not this supports or refutes the hypothesis. So you can kind of break this down into a checklist. It's a mental checklist, not so much a literal checklist, because you can't walk into the AP test having this, and we won't have it in class, but it kind of makes you think about it. It does help you in know where you're going to be looking in the AAQ prompt, should they keep a consistent format that you're often going to be able to find a lot of information in the method section, results section, and participant section, um, which are three of the main parts that you'll be seeing. This AAQ really assesses a lot of the skills that College Board is looking for us to build in the class. So, taking a deep look at the rubric for the AAQ, which you should have with you, um, here's a nice little simplified version. Right. For part A on the research method, we're looking at accuracy. You just simply need to identify which research methods is used in the study. 
okay, whether it is an experiment or a correlational study. Um, there's a chance that you could see a case study, but it is most likely that you're going to see either correlation or experimental, um, not so much on the observation or a case study here. Right. For B, we're looking at a research variable, so you're going to have to make the measurable or quantifiable definition, so that operational definition we've practiced in class for whatever variable they identify. For stats, it's an interpretation uh, of a specific value, so you need to accurately say what that statistic is in relation to the study. Um, so for the first three, there's pretty much a single right answer. We get a little bit more flexible when it comes to D for the ethical guideline. You can choose anything that appears to be applied by the researchers in the study as described. For E, generalizability, you can say the extent to which the study is generalizable. So the study can be generalized to, in describing the population it can be described to, or saying a population that it cannot be described to because the research sample is not representative of that group. And then lastly, argumentation. This really goes on a two-point scale because it is worth two points. First is you need to accurately interpret the study. And then secondly, you need to relate that to the hypothesis proposed. So this is going to be something that may be best answered in two sentences to make sure you hit both parts. So this was the simplified version of the rubric. But we can review an entire detailed AAQ rubric created with some clarifiers that College Board has provided about what would or wouldn't fall in each category, most of them being point no point with the exception being that argumentation category. So for the research method, you really simply need to accurately identify the research method. You can either identify it wrong or not identify any research method at all, and that's what would cause you to miss a point. When it comes to part B, you are going to have to state the operational variable of the identified variable. If you decide not to state the operational definition of the variable, um, or you state a method that is not measurable or quantifiable in a very tactile way, then you are not going to get the point. For C, the statistical interpretation, you accurately describe what it is um, and what it means in the study. If you restate differences without relating it to the study, so you do not connect it to the study at hand, you will not get any uh, points for this. And if you do not accurately read or describe or provide a definition of the study and relate it to the question, you won't get the point. So you really have to make sure that you relate it to the study. So for D, you are going to make sure that you identify an ethical guideline. Uh, if you do not identify an ethical guideline that is in the study, um, or you mention one that they should have done, but it was not mentioned in the study, you may not get the point for this. All right, and for E, the generalizability. You do need to propose some sort of claim about it going to a larger population. You can say that the study is generalizable to a population that is represented in the sample discussed in the article, or you can say that it is not going to be generalizable because of the participants described in the study not matching that additional population that you provide. If you do not make any claim about generalizability, you will lose the point. If you make no reference to a specific population that it would be generalizable to, you cannot get the point. Okay. So for F, you need to focus on two parts. You need to, one, explain the relationship between the evidence and your claim, right? So the fact that you are going to say that it supports or refutes a hypothesis, and then you need to be accurate. So if you use at least one of the research funding findings that explains how it supports or refutes the hypothesis, but your interpretation is not perfectly accurate, you can still get a point, right? But if you are accurate and you do um, support your claim, then you are going to get those two points. So to help you with your AAQ formatting, here's a couple sentence starters or sentence frames that we recommend you using when answering parts of the question. Each answer will be given separately um, from what we've seen in AP Classroom, there's a separate box for each answer. 
So you'd answer part A separate from part B and so on. So in the A box, you would say the research method used is, and you would put the research method that you believe is used in the article that you read. For B, you would say the operational definition of whatever's from the prompt is, and then you would state an operational definition from the article or specified in your own creation. So hopefully these can help you out. Remember for F, for that argumentation, answering in two sentences is really going to help you. Make sure that you are saying the study results show, describe the results as accurate as you can, and then you would say whether it supports or refutes the hypothesis at hand. So this is going to be an online AAQ format, right, with every single box being separate. This is what we're anticipating to see on the AP exam. So you would see the prompt on the left, which is currently blocked up, so you don't see the few <laughs> AAQs that are in AP Classroom, so we can talk about it in class. And then you would have A, B, C, D, E, F on the side and be able to scroll down. So make sure you answer each part separately. Some ways for you to study for the AAQ. Well, one is just reading, research, and practicing. We'll be looking at some research studies in class, and that's a great way to build your skills. Right? Practice identifying the method they are using, identifying the variables, and seeing their operational definitions. Practice reading the statistics. Don't just jump straight to the results. See if you can understand the numbers that you're being given before you read their analysis of them. And then evaluate the extent to which results can be generalized. All the research studies should have some element of describing the limitations, and it's good to practice predicting what they may be before we read them. And if you're not a strong typer, since this is an online format, please practice typing, please. It is going to be a skill that you need to have on the AP test. So please make sure you have that. So, well, we look forward to practicing the AAQ in class, and later on in the year we'll learn more about the EBQ. Right, if you have any questions, write them down right now, so that way you can ask your teacher in class. Right, we are here to help you and see how that <laughs> new AP exam format works out. Remember, while it is different from past years, we do have the benefit of having consistency and expectation and knowing what's going to be on the FRQs. A lot of these are focused in research, which is, again, how we know about so many theories in psychology and have that empirical evidence to prove it.